Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial here on the product rule for derivatives. What I'm going to do in this video is show you how to find the derivative of this function, which happens to be a product of two separate functions. You can see here I've got one function, root x, and I've got another function, 2 minus 3x. I'm going to call those my two functions. Uh, pretend that this one was f of x, uh, and this second function is g of x. You can see I've got a product of two functions there. I can use what's called the product rule for derivatives to find the derivative of this function. What I can do is find the derivative of the first function, f of x, multiply by the second function, g of x, add the first function times the derivative of the second. And that's sort of the process I'm going to take here to find the derivative of this function. Before I do that, I'm going to take this guy, this root x, I'm just going to change it so that it looks a little different and it's easier to find the derivative of. Uh, we know that root x can be written as x to the power of a half. Okay, hopefully you know that at this point. If you're finding derivatives of functions like this, you probably do know that, but I'll link a video here that'll walk you through why that is. But what we can do is write it in this way, and this is just gonna make it a little simpler to find the derivative of this thing. So we know we need to find the derivative of f of x. And what I'm gonna do is just say, I know the overall derivative, g prime of x, is gonna be equal to the derivative of the first function. So the derivative of the first function if I apply the power rule for derivatives, I can take this one half, bring it down in front, keep my x, and reduce my exponent by one. Subtracting one from a half would result in negative a half. So that is the derivative of my first function. I'm then gonna multiply by the second function, which I'm gonna just copy from the line above. I know that's gonna be two minus three x. And my rule here says I have to add the first function times the derivative of the second. So I'm going to take the first function, I'm going to add x to the power of a half, and I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the second function. I should be able to see pretty easily that the derivative of the second function is just negative three. Okay, so at this point, this is really the derivative of my original function. This is totally an acceptable form to leave this in, but a lot of teachers are going to want you to simplify this. And what we need to do to simplify something like this is common factor. Anytime you end up with something like this, x to the power of negative a half, I'm gonna pick on this term in particular because I really don't like negative exponents and I don't like negative rational exponents, uh, exponents with fractions. And I'm assuming you don't either. What I'm gonna do is take this and I'm gonna factor out an x to the power of negative a half from this guy and this guy. So when I do that, uh, what I can do is just simply write x to the power of negative half on the outside of a set of brackets. When I take out x to the minus a half, I'm left with a one half. And to find out what's gonna be in place of this x to the minus a half, I have to lean on my understanding of exponent laws. Originally, I had x to the minus a half, and I'm going to common factor out x to the minus a half. Right, so what I'm really doing is dividing x to the minus a half by x to the minus a half. I can subtract my exponents here, and what you'll see happen here is I end up with negative a half plus a half, which we know to be zero, right? And x to the power of zero is just one. So this guy here is actually going to disappear entirely, right? x to the negative half divided by x to the negative half is one. So we don't even really have that inside of our brackets. So we're really just left with this two minus three x. And next, I'm going to look at what happens when I factor out x to the minus half from x to the half. I'm going to go back over here. But this time, what I have is x to the half. I'm dividing by x to the negative half. So again, I'm going to subtract my exponents. And in this case, I have a half plus a half, which we know to be 1. So I have x to the power of 1, also known as x. So back over to my work here. If I take out x to the minus a half from x to the half, I'm left with x times negative three, which I'm gonna just call minus three x. So again, at this point, this is an acceptable form to say that this is the derivative of my original expression. But what I'm gonna do here is do some more simplification. And at this point, really all I need to do is use the distributive property and just collect some like terms. Okay, so I'm gonna distribute this half into the brackets here. And in doing that, I end up with one minus three over two x. Okay, that's just a little bit of fraction work there. I'm subtracting this 3x here and close out my bracket. 
At this point, I really just need to collect some like terms. I've got an x uh, with the coefficient in front in each case here. And I'm really just going to find a common denominator because I'm working with fractions. So I know that 3 can be written as 6 over 2. Remember, I picked 2 because these guys have to have the same denominator to subtract fractions. At this point, I can really just say, well, I've got negative 3 over 2x minus 6 over 2x. That's just going to be negative 9 over 2x. So I'm going to just erase my work here, call this 9 over 2x. And at this point, I mean, we're getting closer to being really simplified. I, like I said earlier, I don't like negative exponents. and I don't like fractional exponents. So I'm going to take this and apply one of the rules for exponents, negative exponents in particular, to say that this is really just going to be x to the positive of a half in the denominator. I'm left with 1 minus 9 over 2x in the numerator. And I might as well clean this up even further by saying, well, instead of having a fractional exponent here, I can write this as the root of x. I think at this point, this is probably simplified enough for any teacher teaching the product rule for derivatives. As I said earlier, this is a totally acceptable final answer, but a lot of teachers want to see you simplify your work, in particular this step where you common factor out the x to the power of negative half. But at this point, we can say that our derivative of our original function is this guy right here. And so we've successfully applied the product rule to find the derivative of this function. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. We can cover a few examples of applying the quotient rule and the chain rule as well, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.